laugh now, cry later. And when I say cry later, what I really mean is that you might have a man inside of you and you'll be crying later. You young cats out there that will not, that will not put down them guns and try to find a diplomatic way to resolve your issues by speaking, right? Or if you can't speak, throw these. And if you can't throw these, well, you go grab the gun. Um, Put down the guns because there's no guns in prison. And I know it kind of sounds cliche because everybody say that there's no guns in prison. But I can tell you what is in prison. Pimps. Prison pimps. A long time ago, I released a video titled Prison Pimps. This is what the thumbnail looked like. Go check that video out, okay? Um, if y'all don't want to check that video out, let me tell y'all about the video, okay? There was a black guy that liked to turn out young black guys, okay? He liked the young white guys too, but he really preferred young black guys, okay? One day, he ended up pimping out a young guy, a young black guy. And he used to put hard steel in this young black guy at night to turn him out. One day, he was on the phone with dude mama, and he figured out that this was his son. Yeah, the prison pimp ended up having relations with his own son. Um, Yeah, crazy, right? But let's talk to you young cats out there. Y'all said, what they got to do with me? My daddy ain't no prison pimp. No, no, I, I know. I, I get it. I get it. Um, There's guys that's in prison that like young guys, okay? There's guys that's in prison that will see you come in at the age of 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. You only weigh about 150, 160. Never did a push-up or sit-up in a day of your life. You're doing all that lean, smoking all that weed and all that type of stuff. You ain't got no wind. None of that. He'll look at you and say, that's me. Uh, th th that's mine right there, right? A lot of y'all out there like, oh, stop the cap. No, no, no. It ain't no cap. Because, yes, there is a lot of homosexuals that is out of the closet in prison. But a lot of these old timers, they tired of messing with the older punks. They, they, they tired of messing with the, the usual. They want the unusual. They want something nice and young. You know, like older men in the free world, they like young women. They like in their 40s and their 50s looking at 20-year-old girls. Well, that's how these cats get down. And they don't care if you bi curious or curious or straight or not. They don't care. They want something young. They want something tight, right? You young dudes out there, y'all have no idea, no idea what's coming to you. You can laugh, you can joke all day, that's cool. You can get you can get a hold of a piece of steel, that's cool. But what happens when you in there rumbling with a guy that I've been in to a hundred fights already? And out of them hundred fights, he done been stabbed 40 or 50 times already. What you gonna do with that? Here you go, 160. I even give you 170. You about what, 5'8", 5'9", 5'10". The guy in the cell with you, he about 6'8", 350, all muscle. He might even tell you, yeah, come get you one. You get one. Get get one. You get, you get one off. And now it's my turn. You get to punch me one time in the face. Now it's my turn. Now I need me. What you going to do with that? Matter of fact, he like, oh, you know what? I got one better for you. Here's a piece of steel. I ain't going to feel, I ain't going to feel right in this fight. I need, I need to be cut. That's how I get off, right? I remember when I was locked up. I think I was 22, I think. 21 to 22. I end up getting put in this pod with some juveniles. When I got in this pot, I was like, why they got me in here with these juveniles for? You know, every dude in there looked at 14, 15, 16, 17 years old. And I'm like 21, 22. So 
I'm in there. I'm, I'm thinking like, why would they put me on the floor with these juveniles? And I don't know why they did, but it was a wild floor, the, a gladiator floor, right? Fighting all day, just crazy stuff, right? Oh, I had to sell him. I forgot his name, but he ended up catching two bodies, right? So I'm laying down. I got the bottom bunk. He got the top bunk. He like, OG. Yeah, he, a lot of people in there was calling me OG because I was the oldest dude in the pot. OG, hey, uh, how much time you think they going to give me? I said, what you do? Man, I killed my baby mama and I killed our baby. I said, you did what? Yeah, 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 man. The baby was crying. And um, I just got upset and, you know, I I just got rough with the baby. The baby didn't make it. And when my baby mama came in the house, you know, she started tripping on me. So I I expired her too. He didn't say expired. I just want to be in the YouTube guidelines. You know, I can't say certain stuff. So I'm like, okay. He said, you, you think I'm going to go home like in about six months? You think I could be the case in about six months? I said, six months? I said, dude, you, you fighting this case. You're going to have to fight this case for two or three years. You ain't getting out this county for two or three years unless you plead. Um, no, you ain't getting out. He said, what you mean I ain't getting out? I said, dude, you took two human beings' lives. You took a woman life and you took, and you took a baby life. He like, yeah, I know, but, you know, some of my homeboys, they would say I might even just get a year or they might dismiss the case and this and that. I said, let me tell you something. You're not going nowhere. You're not going nowhere. You took two lives. He like, man, so you really think I'm going to do? I said, yes, you're going to do some time. You, you probably do the rest of your life, okay, unless the laws change. Dealing with juvenile um, murders or whatever. No, you you in here. So about five minutes ago by, he was quiet. And he was like, man, OG, what you think going to happen to me when I get locked up? When, you know, when I go up the road? I said, you? I said, you going to get violated. What you mean? Well, you took a woman's life and you took a baby life. Um, guys, that's up north, they don't take too kindly to that. I said, you know, you're a handsome guy too, man. Um, it, it ain't going to be good for you, man. I said, what you need to do is start doing push-ups and sit-ups and start trying to eat everything that you possibly can eat to get you some weight. Because um, even then, man, you just, I said, I don't know, man. Well, what I really was thinking in my head, y'all, again, I really can't say due to YouTube guidelines, but I really wish I could say this. So I'm, I'm going to need for y'all to read in between the lines so I can get this out. What I really wanted to tell him was when you get up there, you're going to get, okay, y'all fill in the blanks. It starts with an F, it's a four-letter word, and it ends with a K. That's what you're going to have. That's what's going to happen to you. When you get up there, you're getting... Like that's just really it. That's it. I, I don't. That's one thing I can tell you. Um, my advice: don't tell nobody your charges. Um, that might not even really matter because you might get some guards in there that's feeling some type of way about what you did, and they might put it out there. Um, it's not hard no more. Everybody get a cell phone there so they can get on the phone and call their people and see what you did. And you being young, man. Um. My only advice is join the Muslims, because the Muslims they forgive you for all your for all your crime. They feel like if Allah will forgive you, then we have to forgive you because we're brothers, right? So they um, accept all type of people in the organization. So I'm like, um, for protection, man, you might just gonna have to join the Muslims, and um. Be it like that. Because outside of that, you're going to get cats in there that feel like, yo, he ain't never going home. I got life. And he's soft on the eyes, too. So I've been lonely up here for a minute. I, You know, I, this how I'm bidding. Hey, um, 
And let me let, let me let me give y'all some advice too. And remember, y'all, this video right here is really aimed at teenagers. It's not a scare straight video. If it was, I'd be talking a whole different way. I'm just really giving y'all the true reality of um of what goes on in there, man. One of my homeboys that I haven't I haven't seen in 10, 20 years. I'm getting old. I ain't seen this dude in 20 years, y'all, since I was 16 years old. 19 years. Yeah, 19 years here. Yeah. I ain't seen this dude since I was 16 years old, y'all. I'm 35 now. When I seen him, you can just tell. You prison dudes, y'all know what I'm talking about. When, when you can tell somebody been touched, it's like... And and, be, and before we even go on with this, let me tell everybody out there that's hearing my voice right now. Prison grape. You know, grape, grape. I can't say the real word, you know, due to YouTube policies. But prison grape is nothing funny about that. When inmates hear another inmate getting violated in that way, we don't think that's cute. We don't think that's funny. It's a shameful thing. I'm talking about ones that, that is getting violated against their will, okay? I'm not talking about the ones that's willingly and, cons and consensually wanting that to happen. I'm talking about dudes that get violated for real, that don't want that to happen to them. We don't think that's cute. We don't think that's funny at all, okay? So don't get that twisted. Moral of that story, stay out of prison. But anyway, I ran into one of my homeboys. I don't want to put his name out there, but me being locked up, and seeing how dudes move, it's all in the body language, man. I seen them at the police station. I was, you all know, I fixed credit and stuff. And I had to file um, a police report because somebody, my identity was stolen. In between the times I was locked up, somebody messed my credit up, but my credit good now. Um, I seen he came in there. And I slipped him, I said, yo, he like, Oh, what's up? Oh, what's up, bro? So we dapped up, you know, gave each other a pound in the hood. I said, man, where you been at? He said, man, I just got out. I said, what you mean you just got out? He said, man, I did a whole dime. I said, you did? He was like, yeah. I said, man, I see you kind of swole. He was like, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's all you can do in there. But I'm, I'm going to talk to you later. Then he, he pimped off. And the way he was walking, I'm looking like he did do... Oh, man, my boy got hit. My boy had to get hit up in there. It's not a game, y'all. It's not a joke. It's, it's really not. It's really not. The worst thing that you can, it's two things that you, three things that you can hear while locked up. That's just so terrifying. It's hearing a man get violated. That's one thing. The second thing is hearing a man cry because he lost somebody close to him. A third thing is when it's real quiet, right? It's real quiet. And you start hearing this noise. I don't know if y'all can hear. It's like a scratcher noise. Let me see. When you start hearing this type of noise. When you hear that noise, there's somebody scraping up that blade. Sharpening that blade up. Yeah, it get real quiet. And y'all say, well, one of people be making noise. No, you trying to figure out where that noise coming from. Like if you got beef with somebody on a pot and you hear that noise, you want you want to know where that noise coming from. You want to know who's sharpening that steel so you can get ready. You better be quiet. It be, hey, you can hear a mouse peeing on cotton when, when y'all hear that scraping noise. Because you know... Somebody getting that sword of justice ready to push on somebody, right? Um, prison pimps do exist. Now, let's get to it. So, a prison pimp, a lot of them have the gift of gaff. They know how to talk. They'll talk to you like a woman, right? Like a, like a man that's trying to charm a woman. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um... They can come at you in all type of ways. You got gorilla pimping, right? 
You got Gorilla Pippin, which you got a guy that just come up in your cell and tell you like, yo, this is how this is going to be. And this is just what it is. Quick story. Um, there was a cat, this, this pimp that was in there that what he would do is if he wanted to, he was seeing his punks at you. He was seeing his girls, the boys in prison. They call them the boys. Okay. He had sent his boys at you, but these are gay guys. Okay. He had sent them at you, like trying to give you gifts, trying to push up on you, try to um, just try to talk you into it to getting down with them. Right. That was one tactic that he would do. The other tactic where he would do what I call gorilla pimping is when he is seeing the same punks at you, about four, five of them, and they violate you. They violate you. Yeah, they hold you down and violate you. Um, It's some other stuff I really want to say, but I know YouTube ain't going to play with me. So I, I got I to gotta be careful the way um, I say the next thing. You got it where some of these pimps. Mm. No, nah, we'll say that for later. But um, soft pressing, you know, these pimps will sit up there and give you things. Um, oh, you new here? You ain't got no money on your books? I got you. Um, you need some soap, deodorant? I got you. You need some food? I got you. Um, then they tell you like, well, you know, everybody got to get a hustle in here. And I know I know you're not a homosexual, but I'm not neither. And But what you doing, um, I need for you to go into the cell. It's, it's three cells down there. It's this short black dude in there. I need you to go in there and take care of him for me. Um, and, and you ain't going to be doing no homo stuff, man. Just, just, just do what he tell you to do. And um, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and if... I, I got you, man. I ain't going to let nobody hurt you in here. This is how pimps really are in real life. Manipulators. Now, this don't work on everybody, okay? Um, but there's a there's a lot of people that get locked up that is very naive, okay? That they don't know when game is being ran on them. I'm going 100 miles per hour, y'all. It's so much stuff that I want to tell y'all, but I can't get it all out in this video. But I'm going to tell y'all this too. For you guys out there, you young guys again, that like to get high and like to get drunk and pop the pills and perks, prison is a place that you do not want to get high and drunk. You need to always stay on your P's and Q's and have your dome piece right. There's a, there's a guy. Unfortunately, it was a young white guy. He... I, I, he was a college kid, got drunk, crashed, unalive three people, okay? He ended up getting 20 years. For him to deal with the pain that he was going through, um, he never had a criminal record. He never been around these type of people. And since the severity of what he did, he went into a violent, a very violent prison. Um, He fought. Every day he fought to protect his six. Did you know what I mean? Um, but the fight was getting too much to him. Oh, he fought. He fought for his. I can't call him a white boy. You got to call him a white man. I told y'all it's a difference between a white boy and a white man. A white man is going to fight for his. A white boy is just going to give it up. All right? Um, so this white man I had to put some respect on it. So the white man... You know, he was fighting every day to protect his six. Um, one day, him and his, him, him and his celly was talking. His celly was cooking up the, y'all know the jungle juice, Dante's special recipe. And um, he got him drunk. And in his state of drunkness, um... His cellmate allowed three other guys that was trying to get at him in the cell. And they violated him. Violated him. 
in a way, they violated him in a way that a man should not lay down with another man according to the scriptures. So y'all fill in the blanks. They violated him because he got drunk. Well, it is what it is. The whole point of this video is to warn, warn. I, I don't know about, I don't know about y'all, you guys out there, you young guys. I like women. I like women. Okay, I don't like being around dudes. I don't even like dudes. This video is to let you know what is waiting for you behind them bars. Okay, this is what is waiting for you. Depression, anxiety, right? Always wondering what's around the corner. I tell y'all, I tell y'all all the time. When I first got locked up to, to start my 10-year bid that I only had to do two though. I said this to myself, I'm not going to die in here and I'm not going to be no homosexual. That's it. I'm not going to die and I'm not going to be no homosexual. Everything else, it, it is what it is. That's what I said to myself. I'm still alive, y'all, right? And I'm not a homosexual. You got to fight. You got to fight. Another thing. I know it's hard out here. I know it. I know it. But it got to be a better way, man. It, it just got to be a better way. Get a job. I know y'all are used to fast money. You got to get adjusted, man. It's a lot of cats that's locked up that's right now that wish and pray to God, man, I would work that McDonald's job. Right? Why? Because the job that they working right now, only paying them $14 a month. And they working 8, 10 hours a day. Y'all don't know how it is, man. Y'all really don't know. For the people that have been locked down before, this not for you. Because y'all already know. This ain't What I'm saying ain't nothing but a repeat to y'all. This ain't nothing. Right? But for the ones that never been locked up before, y'all better pay attention, man. Y'all better pay attention. I I keep remembering this young white this young white boy from cell to cell, every other cell being violated, passed around. It's passed around, just like a like a piece of paper. It's passed around. When I when I used to see him on the yard, it's like like the Walking Dead. Like his soul wasn't even there anymore. Just eyes all sunk in, despair, hopelessness. He probably thought a couple of times to of ending it all, but just couldn't stomach it. Couldn't get couldn't go through with it. I, I used to think about that guy, and I wonder what what that, did, he, did he did he do to commit the ultimate thing and take himself out of his own misery? Did he PC up? I, I don't know. But speaking of PC up, um, for you young cats out there too that might find yourselves in one of these situations, um, yeah, PC up. Go do your time in a hole, man. Go do your time in a hole because it's either that if you're going to fight or get, y'all know what I mean, start with an F or N and end with a K. I, I, I don't know. But what I do know is, I know it's hard out here, y'all, but, yo, I'd rather be at a McDonald's job than um, in prison, man. Y'all want to give a very special shout out to all my members, okay? I appreciate y'all for holding me down. And I want to give a very special shout out to everybody that be blessing the Cash App. Um, shout out to Eric Vasquez, James Carey, Monique Hudson, Otto Davis Jr., Rufus, uh, or Ruffless, and Kai. I appreciate all of y'all. The Dante Show 